Hi Concordia, my name is Lauren Cronick and I'm here with the cast and coordinators um, from V-Day Montreal. We just wrapped up the performance of the Vagina Monologues in February and we're here to talk to you today about the impact that V-Day has had in Montreal and our experience performing in it. Hi, I'm Andrea Di Tommaso. I'm one of the coordinators of V-Day Montreal. I'm Megan Dove. I played my angry vagina in V-Day Montreal. Uh, my name is Warna Sesuailo and uh, I was part of the performance. Um, my monologue was The Crooked Braid. So what do you feel is the greatest benefit in participating in V-Day Montreal? Well, personally, I, it opened up my eyes to a whole new world for me in, in the arts and in the um, entertainment in industry as well as really making connections with other women in the community and doing things to help them. Um, I think that the benefit of being in a V-Day performance of the Vagina Monologues as opposed to any other play is uh, it's a charity. When you're doing rehearsals, they educate you on issues for women around the world. They really form a core group of women as opposed to just actresses who are going in and playing a part. And I think that it really, you come out of it with a connection to something bigger than just to play in a performance. Yeah, I would say definitely what both of them just said, and also the fact that um, that Eve Ensler allows this show to be used for artists like myself, who are theater artists, to have um, copyrights free, uh, an amazing performance to produce in order to to gain uh, you know funds for different charities and to have these connections uh, with different women in the show. I think is a is a great thing. So, in this past year, there's been a lot of criticism from different communities about the performance of the Vagina Monologues, and what was the response from Montreal in general? Um, from someone who's been with the V-Day movement in 2008 from start to finish, um, we have had a, quite a warm welcome from Montreal in general. Um, when you look at the reactions of other cities, especially uh, to the south of us, how they can really get riled up about anything really s insignificant. Montreal has got a very open sexual community and is very inviting to all form of art, whether it be controversial or not controversial. Um, I would say we got maybe one email that was a hate mail, and but the rest of the time we were, I was very pleasantly surprised to see how welcoming everybody was. What's the distinction between the Vagina Monologues and V-Day the Charity, and what are the different faucets of V-Day Montreal this year? Um, the distinction that I make between the Vagina Monologues and V-Day is the Vagina Monologues are a play written by Eve Ensler. For the V-Day Charity, Eve Ensler gives up the rights to the Vagina Monologues and allows communities around the world to perform it in order to raise money to stop violence against women. Um, V-Day itself is not only the vagina monologues. In Montreal, we had a burlesque show, we had a concert, a vernissage, we performed the vagina monologues, and I think there's going to be more things going on. So when you say V-Day, it's not just the vagina monologues. It's a whole charity movement that's around the world, doing everything from supporting sex trade workers to helping to stop female circumcision in Africa and everywhere else. Yeah, there's uh, over 120 countries that have a V-Day movement and uh, the, the emphasis of the V-Day movement is to put on a production of the, vitam the, the, the vagina monologues to, to really raise awareness because the stories of these individual women whom events are based her play about really does give a broad picture of what women have to go through in everyday life, in war, you know, being abused, being just dissatisfied with their bodies, or and it's uh, and it's more than just a play. It's really, really tries to bring awareness to everyone. Being a part of the vagina monologues doesn't necessarily mean that you're an actor yourself. So, could you just outline some of your experience in the campaign to end violence against women prior to the production? Um, well, first. Uh, for me personally, um, I'm from Botswana, I just moved here a couple of months ago, well about 10 months ago now, and uh, back there, um, like my family's very, very uh, 
involved in the women's rights movement from um, my mother helping to set up uh, NGOs to just, uh, you know, you name it, we're sort of there. So I think uh, it's been in my life for a very long time, the idea of, um, you know, different sorts of rights, not just uh, women's rights, but uh, children's rights as well. And, and I feel like anytime you're given an opportunity to... Um, to do something like this where it's so sort of upfront and showing, you know, and you can like raise a lot of money and then uh, I'm, I'm definitely a, a part of that. Um, me personally, I, since I was a little girl, my mom has been taking me to take back the night marches and everything like that. I was raised on it. I was part of Oberg at University of Toronto and aside from that it was mostly a musical involvement through like punk and folk music trying to draw attention to the issues in a more fun kind of way. So presenting a play as an extension of that to me, make it fun, but make it have an impact on society as well. Personally, I think I've always had this little feminist inside that's just ready to, <laughs> to break <laughs> open and say, Bust hey, <laughs> you know, we've got to do something about, you know, women being hurt. I mean, as a gender, uh, as a sex, we are the most abused and, you know, we have the most violence against us specifically as a gender in the entire world. And and I have been witness to this. I have friends who have had violence committed against, against them. I have had experiences myself with being not like abused physically and, and mentally especially. And I just came to the point where, you know what, I've got to do this for me and we have to do this for each other because we need it. Um, how do you feel that Vide has had an impact in Montreal and how do you feel it's going to continue to evolve? Well, this particular um, performance, um, I believe it was the first community Vide because Vide can be community or college. They've been doing the college performances for a long time in Montreal, but it was the first community one. And it was done completely bilingually. And I think that really opened a lot of doors up because um, a lot of French speaking people, which majority uh, here in this city um, had not had the opportunity to come and see the show or to be a part of the experience, not just see it, but of course we had a bunch of francophone actors and performers in the, uh, in the performance itself. So I feel like, first of all, just opening it up to a different um, language scope, which a ton of people, including a bunch of immigrants, speak, um, was already a really good thing happening and I think from there it can only grow and get better as in including different uh, parts of you know I mean right now it was a benefit and so there was a certain you know ring to it but maybe another time uh, maybe next year we can do um, you know one event that's specifically for people who maybe can't afford to pay a lot of money to come you know like a cheaper version for and stuff like that so as far as I'm concerned it can only evolve we can only learn from what we've done already and and get better but as a starting point I thought it, they did a very good job the coordinators and uh, the other the two Emily's and uh, and Maya and Andrea they did an awesome job and <clears throat> the impact that I saw is well, financially, it is a fundraiser for local charities and local organizations, and the money that was raised through all of the things that we did went to Shield of Athena and uh, Shea Stella, the YWCA. <laughs> Just a little bit of money directed towards those small places can have a huge impact. And on a personal level, most of the girls and most of the women that I know who are involved in it are going to be back next year. And I have a feeling that all of them are going to be friends because it's... There's something very, very empowering, I think, for both men and women about being involved in a group where people just come together, recognize there's something wrong, and in a very positive way try to change it. And mm -hmm. I think that all of us have a different glow and perspective on life because of it, and all of our friends want that too. Yeah, the vagina monologues, it's, it's about being positive and doing something positive to affect change within the community. And even if we've touched one person in the audience, which we have, <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I've seen people run out in tears. Um, it's, 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 a, it's an effect for change. And we're going to be doing this next year and the year after that and the year after that. And every year it's going to get better. And we would invite anyone who wants to be a part of this, who wants to affect change, who wants to be part of something within theater, within, within the media, just, you know, either to get experience or to do something for yourself to just, you know, come and volunteer and be part of this next year. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.